Hey everyone, it's Ryan. Um, in today's tutorial, I'm going to be talking about installing LandCache on OnRaid. I've been trying to get LandCache installed now for the last couple weeks, and I've only been finding over-technical explanations on how to do it or having to use a VM. Um, right before I gave up, though, I was searching around in the community apps and found uh, two uh, Docker plugins that just work right out of the box. Um, they're not technical at all, very easy to set up, and it just works out of the box. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and let's dig in. One of the first things you need to do is go ahead and get logged in to your OnRaid server. So let's go ahead and log into my OnRaid server. Once you're logged in, go ahead and go to Shares. Click Add Share. Let's go ahead and give this a share name of land cache. We all lowercase all together. There we go. Now you can decide whether or not if you have caching set up on your server, whether or not if you want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and set mine to yes, as I do have a cache set up that I like to use. Um, most all these other settings, I basically leave as is the only difference is if you wanted to include or exclude certain discs for being used that's totally up to you um, after you have oh uh, let's go add an e in there after everything filled in go ahead and click on add share and then go ahead and click done now we have a new share here called land cache now the next step is i need you to click on apps and if you do not have the community application plugin, there is a link on how to get that installed in the video description down below. So what you want to search for in here is go ahead and type in land cache. And you can see there are two different land. There's a land cache and a land cache bundle. We want to install this uh, land cache here. So go ahead and click. Go ahead and click on it. And then click install. Now from here, you can rename it if you want to rename it. Network type should be on bridge. And then here you need to set this to a fixed IP address. I recommend you do this. It's optional, but for the ease of the tutorial, I suggest you do this and make sure it's something that's an IP address that is not being used. So for me, I'm going to use 192.168.1.1.1. You can change these ports if you need to, or if it's interfering with another container, that's totally up to you. And then as far as the log folder, we want to go ahead and you can change that uh, if you want to. Um, I'm, you can leave it at the default or you can change it. I like to keep all of my Docker stuff all in the same folder. So I'm going to go ahead and update this by having it just going directly to the land cache folder and then create a new directory called logs to store all the log files. Or you can leave it at default, totally your choice. The next option here is we want to set the land cache uh, cache folder. So uh, what I like to do is I like to switch this just to, my, uh, to our new shared folder which is the user slash land cache. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the app data on here and just leave that right there at land cache. Just like this. So it should be mount user forward slash land cache. That should be your, where your cache folder is going to be and your logs will be mount slash user slash land cache slash logs. Once you have both of those set, go ahead and click apply. I'm just going to go ahead and create the container. Let's 
takes a little bit of time here. There you go. Go ahead and click done. Now we also need to install Landcache DNS. So we're going to click on Landcache DNS. We're going to click install. Make sure it is set to network type is a bridge. Like I said, you can adjust the ports if necessary. And the only other setting you need to do for this one is the IP address of the LAN cache Docker. So you need to tell it what is the IP address of the last, um, basically where your, you know, one that we just set up as. So the LAN cache IP that we set up was 192. Dot one six eight dot one dot fifteen. Okay, that's our land cache IP. Make sure oh, I forgot to change the network type to uh, a custom bridge instead of just bridge because I would like to change it to a specific IP address. And I'm going to go ahead and give this an IP address of 192.168.1.14. Oh, looks like I forgot a uh, well, one there. There we go. So just to recap, for land cache DNS, you want to set to a custom bridge. You want to set to its fixed IP address to be something different than the land cache IP address we set up earlier. And then down below for land cache IP, you need to specify your land cache IP, which it looks like I forgot a one there as well. Let's fix that real quick. So the land cache IP would be the 192.168.1.15 and its DNS Docker we're setting up is going to be at 192.168.14. So this is the Docker container that we're setting up right now. And this is the land cache IP is the Docker container we set up earlier at the 115. After that, go ahead and click apply. Wait for it to do its thing. Go ahead and close. And now if we click on Docker, you should have two different LAN caches running. One's LAN cache and one's LAN cache DN DNS. You can see I have one here at 1.14 and this one at 1.15 as far as IP addresses. And I have this set to mount user LAN cache logs. And then for the cache itself is mount user slash LAN cache. So now we have both of those set that's it as far as everything we need to do on on raid now we need to go ahead and do some changes on our local windows computer if you're on a mac there are um, instructions online available to look up on how to change your dns settings on your mac but this is strictly for how to do it on windows so first thing you want to do is you want to go to your control panel then you want to click on Network and Internet. Then click on Network and Sharing Center. Click on Change Adapter Settings. Right click on your controller, whether it be an Ethernet or Wi Fi. If you're using a laptop, it'd be Wi Fi. If you're using Wi Fi, but for me, I'm on Ethernet. So I'm going to right click on Ethernet. I'm going to go to Properties. And I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to click on where it says Internet Protocol Version 4. Click on that. Click on properties and then down here where it says obtain dns server address automatically we're going to go ahead and change that so click use the following dns server ip address and for this we're going to set this to our land cache or the land cache dns server that's what we're going to put there so that's it 192.168.1.15 dot one dot 14 
or whatever IP address you use when you set this up. But that's what I'm using for me. So after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and click OK and then close. And you can go ahead and close these two windows as well. Now we need to load up a command prompt. So let's go over here, go to the command prompt. And once you're here on the command prompt, you're going to type in ipconfig space forward slash flush DNS altogether and all lowercase. So it'd be ipconfig space forward slash flush DNS. Go ahead and push enter. Now it should say successfully flush the DNS solver catch. I'm going to go ahead and run that one more time and one more time. I like to run it three times just to make sure that everything is done and has been completely taken care of. Next up is you're going to want to go ahead and load up Steam. So let's go ahead and get Steam running. Go ahead and just type in Steam here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and load up Steam. Okay, going to go to Library. And going to pick a game here to download. So let's just say we wanted to install Half-Life. Going to go ahead and click Install. I'm just going to go ahead and begin download off of the internet. So let's go ahead and hit uh, Next. Okay. Let's go ahead and start downloading. Now let's go ahead and see to make sure that our land cache is actually working. To do that, open up your file explorer. Go down to your network. Find your on RAID server. Click on the land cache directory. And then open the cache folder. And if you see a bunch of random files and stuff placed in here, that means the cache is working correctly and everything is all set on your end. So now we just need to go ahead and wait for this game to go ahead and download and finish. All right, so it looks like we got that game installed. Now we're going to go back to our library home here. And we're going to find Half-Life 2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to Uninstall. Yes. Okay, the game has been completely uninstalled. So now this time, when we click Install, we will be downloading the game directly from our OnRaid server instead of from the internet. Go ahead and click Install again. Go ahead and click Next. Your speed will be a lot faster than this. Currently, my server is checking its disk uh, for error, so it's doing another job right now. So the on-raid server is not running at its full potential. But basically, I am downloading directly from the on-raid server, though, and not the internet, right from the cache server. But it's really that simple to set up. It, it, it's really, I feel like it's a pretty easy thing to go ahead and get set up here on on-raid. Um, so... That's pretty much it. Let me know if anyone has any questions, um, has any issues getting it set up, but it's a pretty easy, simple setup with those two Docker plugins and it just works out of the box. Anyways, um, that's it. That wraps up uh, today's video. And let me know if you have any questions or concerns, please leave comments. Uh, remember to uh, like, share, and subscribe. And remember, if Wright can do it, so can you.